So welcome everybody to this morning's webinar on automation. Um, I'm quite excited to, to be host this morning. It's a subject that's close to my heart and through my career, certainly I've seen automation go from, from zero to, to a million miles an hour. Uh, I worked in pharmaceutical a long, long time ago and uh, regression testing was a massive subject and automation, I'm afraid, was just keystroke emulation and it was a bit of torture, really. So to see how the world has moved on and incorporating AI as well is really exciting. Anyway, yes, yeah, so good morning. Welcome to the session. Uh, we've got chat and uh, question and answer available within Zoom. So please do take advantage of that through the session. Um, what I'll do is I'll capture any questions that come through and we'll just take those at the end with James. Uh, and just a reminder to everybody, we, we are recording the session. So we'll, I'll issue that um, for, for public consumption a little bit later on, probably won't be this week, but uh, probably mid part of next week. And, and we'll also have that available on social media at some point in the future as well. So you can always come back to it if there's any colleagues that, uh, that are missing it today. Uh, but um, I, I don't really wanna take a lot of time with me just sort of rambling away. I'm just passing a little bit of time while other people might be joining. But um, yeah, thank you to, to James for, for, for joining us for the session this morning. James is subject matter expert on uh, Ansible and Red Hat products here at Meridian IT. So James, thank you for uh, taking the time out to um, just to speak with us this morning about what you've learned. Uh, the other thing that um, that's gonna be key as part of this morning is perhaps a little demo, James. I know it's a bit dangerous to do a demo uh, sometimes on a live session, but we might have a look at, did you say you were gonna look at Watson What's the next? What's the next? It's a bit temperamental, so I'll probably leave it for this morning, but uh, we certainly have some good Q&A about it. Fantastic. OK, so what's the next for, I'm not going to steal James's thunder, but basically for, if it had been 30 years ago, it would have been perfect for me because it would write code for you. Uh, so absolutely ideal bit of uh, technology and use of AI. But OK, enough of me waffling on. James, uh, do you want to just put your presentation up and I'll let you crack on and then I'll wrap up at the end. Hopefully you can see that, Alex. That's great. Yeah, I can see your screen, so I'll let you crack on. I'll go on mute in the meantime. Perfect. Thank you. Good morning, all. So uh, topics we're going to get involved in today are... So we're going to talk about what is Ansible. Uh, Ansible is an industry standard, so we're going to get into uh, just a high level of what it is. We'll talk about Ansible automation options for IBM I. Uh, we'll talk a bit about Ansible Lightspeed because AI doesn't matter which conference or session you go to, there is AI involved in any session at the moment. Uh, we'll talk about how you can get started and what uh, what community edition looks like. Uh, and then we'll leave time for at the end for, for some Q&A. So uh, for anyone that doesn't know, we'll just take it back to basics. So Ansible effectively is a project that's uh, based on an open source, uh, but it's sponsored by Red Hat. And that's the key thing. Anything that uh, IBM Power Conference, IBM I that you go to at the moment uh, in every single session again as well, uh, there is a reference to Red Hat. Uh, so what it is, is it's a simple automation language that describes your application environments using playbooks. Uh, and that's quite key. So here we go. So an Ansible engine is supported from the Ansible uh, community project. So there's community Ansible and there's enterprise Ansible, and they are a big difference. Uh, but this is where the community Ansible is, is great because it's free, it's upstream as, uh, as you might hear, uh, but you can go and try it uh, and get used to it uh, fairly easy. Uh, and then the Ansible playbooks are written in uh, YAML files. Uh, YAML being uh, yet another markup language, which I always find quite amusing because rather than give it its own one, decide to give it a nice acronym. Um, but this is where the playbook, and we'll see some playbooks later on, but where they uh, nicely describe uh, what uh, the tasks are that are being carried out. Uh, so that even if you're not a, a system ops person or a native person to the OS that you're delivering on, uh, you have, would have some description as to uh, what they are involved. If we look at a basic setup, you'd have a developer or a, a business analyst, uh, and essentially, but uh, they would write playbooks. So you write playbooks, uh, so YAML files, and uh, if you don't have any source control and you just want to get started, you can just write uh, playbooks. Uh, there's fairly plenty of examples, and we'll get on to what the Galaxy involves. From an execution perspective, and again, in Community Edition, you can say, I'll run a playbook. So I'll run a playbook, I'll run it with some variables, uh, and then against the infantry. So the infantry is the key part here, and this is where the Ansible automation really plays nicely. I can have a playbook that does uh, a set of tasks, 
uh, with some variables. So I'd like to check if my system has the following PTFs. And I can have that as a parameter. I pass in the parameter of a PTF number, or I want to check if a user exists, pass it in a variable, and the inventory is the target I want to do. So if I have three or four different uh, LPARs, I can run the same playbook uh, exactly the same way on all machines. And all I just do is I change the inventory. So I change the host that it's going to report against. And that's really, really the nice bit. It's that uh, repeatable process uh, that is just, uh, sometimes it's mundane, but it's repeatable and it's a uh, better use of time. So allocating my time where it's better, more effective. In terms of the Galaxy that we mentioned, so the Galaxy for an IBM I, so there's, the Galaxy is not just the IBM Power specific, the Galaxy is a community uh, repository of lots and lots of collections. So just if we talk specifically about the IBM I collection, it's been over 67,000 downloads um, in the collection. There's obviously things like AIX as well, if, you, if you're more specific about IBM Power, um, but that comprises of at the moment 26 roles and, and six actions. Uh, and the roles are kind of key as to how you do the playbooks, and we'll see some of that uh, later on. But the thing here about uh, Ansible is it's not just specific to uh, IBM Power, IBM I. There are lots of different IBM collections available uh, that you have. So you'll have a collection, and then each collection will have its own internal modules. And again, we can see some of that uh, on the next slide. So for example, here's the, the link to the, the Galaxy repository. Uh, and you can see example here. And again, that's available in the Galaxy, which is to submit a batch job to call a program. So they are fairly well documented in there. So I've got one about calling a, submitting a job. I've got one about comparing system values. So you can get, again, see that uh, it's very, very easy to read. It calls a program. There are no parameters to the playbook, um, but this is again, where you have the nice audit trail. And again, You'll, uh, we'll see things like, you know, well, I could run this on the job schedule and we'll come as to, to where the advantage is in here. But it's very simplistic. Again, uh, lots of examples, you know, even things like uh, finding uh, unreplied messages on a message type to a message queue. So you can decide to, uh, you know, have an operation as to find no reply or replied. Uh, and again, you could see how easily you could make this fairly simplistic. Uh, we could have it more, more robust. Um, and then because Ansible does things like uh, uh, allow you to do emails or webhooks, you could, for example, have it hook into Teams. So as part of the automation, you could have it uh, send a notification in something like Slack or Teams. Uh, oh, by the way, I've checked this. There were six messages that need replying, uh, and here's a list of the messages. So you can capture that information, which makes it much more powerful than just a fire and forget. So if you do community, uh, community about uh, is uh, community Ansible. You effectively probably going to have a developer IDE. Developer IDE was probably more something like Visual Studio Code. A uh, VS Code is becoming uh, almost an industry standard uh, for non-power. But also, if uh, if anyone was at uh, Common Europe recently or saw the power up in the states, uh, Visual Studio Code has got things like the Code for I, uh, Code for I, the DBT functionality. They are embedding a lot, lot more. IBM I functionality into the IDE. And that's great because then you have the same IDE and having the same IDE means that you have the ability to say, right, well, I use it for IBM I, I can uh, interrogate it for Ansible or the other way around, but it gives you a flavor. You then have things like the Ansible Galaxy and it's uh, the Alex of the Galaxy I was already alluded to is the community uh, in the uh, community public. So, you're then essentially going to run it against the host. Now you'll notice here, I don't just have uh, an IBM I. So this is where the collaboration comes in. I can run a playbook. It might be against IBM I, but you may decide to scale it out. So it works on whether it's public, private, cloud, networking. So you can decide to scale your automation, uh, pick your common use cases. Um, so I know, for example, one of the common use cases around user profile management. So an example might be that I decide I want to uh, onboard a new user to the organization. And as part of that, I want to create the user profile in various different locations. I want to create it in IBMI, but I also want to create it in uh, Microsoft Active Directory and potentially in other systems. Well, that's great because I can have a playbook for my IBMI. I can have a playbook for my uh, Active Directory. Uh, and if I need them to have access to firewalls, then I can program that as well. And what becomes really nice is we can plug those together 
in a workflow in AAP. So we do it manually. We'll talk about how we do it manually. We'd run a series of steps, a series of playbooks uh, to get to, to get up and running. But where the real big benefit here comes is, is in the Red Hat Ansible automation platform. So this is when you, you've tried and you've tested it, you've looked at community and said, actually, yes, we need to look at the, the next step. Um, so this is where you would then get benefit from the automation hub, the private automation hub. So that's where you develop your own internal that you may have your own customers that you deal with, that you can make those playbooks available to them. But this is where you get the benefit of the certified collection. So AAP has two main collections that they have. They have certified, which effectively is the uh, supported versions that security tested. You then have validated by. And validated is whereby uh, people are uh, enabling for particular use cases. They're validated, but there is not the full support, but they are tried and tested and they prove the IBM use case. And then that's where you then get the, the whole benefit of the build, the collaborating and the publish, and then the trust, because you are pushing it right through uh, the security cycle and the development process. I'll just touch briefly on this in terms of what you get uh, in AAP. So there's execution builder, there's content tools, content collections, as I mentioned, so you can control those. Uh, this is where, again, the one of the key things is you get execution environments. Uh, as we know, uh, not all environments are at the same level, nor can they be at the same level. So this is where you can have specific execution environments to run different variations of uh, Python, because that's what it needs on the end, but a different variants of Python on the end target. Uh, the good thing here is, is there's not an agent to go and install on all the machines. It's agentless. So that's a really, really big benefit here. Uh, and then you've got things like insights. And the Red Hat Insights is where it enables you to almost self-heal. I've seen this, there's an error, and actually what I'd like you to do is run the following playbook as uh, the first rem remediation step. It also has a nice pretty dashboard. And again, you have uh, authorities and you set up security rules, but this is where, for example, you can see <clears throat> you have things like templates down the side, you have credentials, you'll have projects, you can group things together. Uh, the total number of inventories. So how many systems do you decide that you want to look at? Uh, again, a project uh, is typically tied to uh, to a Git instance. So again, I know we have customers on here that are using either things like Azure DevOps, GitLab or GitHub. Again, your Ansible playbooks, when you get to this stage, you're probably not starting out. You're deciding that actually, yes, we want to have change control, but we have change control of the Ansible playbooks. That's in Git. Uh, and then AAP can take advantage of that to then pull it from the Git repository. So I'm always running the latest variation. So I've got my standard change control, and then I've got my deployments, my uh, executions in Ansible. Again, I can see what is successful and what is failed. And that's really good because obviously you have your full audit history in here as well. This is the big benefit because one of the common uh, things that we'll see here is, is, well, I can do a lot of what you've been saying. I can do it native learn the eye, I've got job scheduler, or I've got native IBMI automation tools. Yes, but this is where AAP here and Ansible is designed to have a, a collaborative and a central repository for automation across the organization. So for example, here you can see I've got things like a job one and job two. If it's successful, I want to do job two. If it's not successful, I want to do three. But this is where you can get into cross-platform automation. So when I said about creating those users, create it in AD if it's successful, create it on the I, then create it in maybe my uh, Linux environment. And if it's successful in all of it, great. If it's not, then what I'd like to do is actually roll it back. I don't want a user sitting in somewhere and not in the other place. If it fails for whatever reason, then I've got my audit trial, I've got my audit history, I can see where it failed. Uh, and that's the real, real benefit here is, is I can cross platform. So for example, it could be the same job, and multiple systems. For example, I want to patch my dev system and my test system with PTFs. I'll patch the dev system, and if that is successful, then I can patch my test system. It may be you have your own uh, existing routines. So one of the examples you saw is about submitting a job. The Galaxy has collections for calling CL. So you're not necessarily also, also going to reinvent the world. If you've got existing routines, great, we'll use them. We don't necessarily have to rewrite everything in Ansible. You know, let's pick the best tools that fit, uh, fit the solution and the desired outcome. We'll talk about light speed. 
uh, just as a little bit. So uh, if anyone's heard of Ansible Lightspeed, you've heard of things like what's an Xcode Assistant. This is the generative AI part. This is where I write my playbook. I can give it a set of, uh, a set of instructions uh, or a set of commands in natural language form. It will then go off to uh, using the best practices and anonymize it, but then it will use the Watson X large language model, which is IBM I aware, which is great. So you can also customize it, but out of the box, you can do it. So for example, if you said, I would like to query my system for the following PTFs, then what it will do is it will give you a suggestion. So as you can see in the screenshot here, and we'll see some more in a minute, but if you press enter, it will, let, it will then give you a suggestion. And it is a suggestion. It's not saying it is 100% correct. It is a suggestion. And what that means is, is if I accept the suggestion, it notes that that was a good suggestion. And we'll come on to how those suggestions work in a minute. So as you see here, you can see you've got multiple examples. And what you can see here, we can see we've got a certain Ansible user. And again, I appreciate these are not all IBMI specific, but I appreciate, uh, an Ansible user is not root and install Podman and pull the HTTP container and create an HTTP container. It has done a multitask generation. So it's done an assert, an assert is like a test, failed message, success message. So it's pre-built all this information. It's then worked out that it needs Podman. And then you'll notice it's even given variables. So it's even defaulted to saying, okay, I don't know what a username and a password is, so you're going to need to provide that to me. And when you get into writing playbooks, what you'll find is, is you'll have some defaults and you'll have some predefined variables. What is also good is, is it is agnostic and aware throughout this playbook. So what it can actually do is say, oh, if you've got some variables defined here, it will know that I can use variables predefined in my, uh, in my template suggestion, which is really, really powerful. So as I said, multitask generation, just by using an ampersand, it knows that you want a multitask. Yep, so again, it's treated as a comment. By pressing an enter key, it will go and generate it for you. Content source matching. Uh, and for me, this is quite key. When we're getting into uh, AI, uh, the big thing, you know, we've all probably heard of JetGBT, we're all potential users of JetGBT, but it's knowing that what we are given uh, is trusted information. And this is what's really, really good. So there's transparency here in that uh, we can find out where that suggestion comes from, where it comes from, what version it is, you know, who it sources, who its author is, what's its license. So again, one of the things when you get into generative AI, of course, is not just in Ansible, but, you know, recently there was announced IBM I generative AI. Um, when we get into that, then there's going to be that trust element and uh, security element and potential license implications. So we want to make sure that anything that we use, we can free it free to use and also trust where it's coming from. And that's key when we're doing this. In terms of the uh, Ansible automation, what's going to exist? There's a figure is around about 60% uh, that of content when they were running the uh, Lightspeed pilot in the preview uh, whereby 60% could be automatically generated uh, when they were starting out, uh, which is uh, which is great because it, what it, the whole point here is is it can in increase your time to to market, increase your development time, and just speed up getting familiar. Uh, one of the things that's quite interesting is the syntax, and it's syntax aware as well, so it automatically indents at the proper indentation for you as well as part of the generation. So if we're wondering how we want to get started. Well, there's a couple of ways. So you can go and get, download the VS Code extension. So go and get VS Code if you haven't already got it. There's an Ansible extension you can install. If you really, really want to get also started, uh, again, you can use things like Ubuntu Desktop for Windows. It's free. You may already say, I've got Ubuntu. I've already got a real machine. If you have, great. If you don't, uh, this is just an alternative as well. Uh, what it really means is, is you can then play with saying, I want to set up an inventory. I just want to test it on the local machine, for example, uh, just to get familiar with it. In terms of the IBMI, there are a couple of software dependencies. I would say probably the top two are fairly common, uh, as you may or may not be aware. Uh, open source pa packages are now available on the I. The history goes that it used to be open source solutions, used to be an installable option. What they've uh, realized is, is that the open source community tenderly tends to go a lot, lot faster than the traditional IBMI 
security PTFs. So what they've done is, is now you can use things like a yum installer, which is what you would use non on, on non I, but you can use a yum installer to install things like Python and lots and lots of open source packages. Uh, and obviously you can take advantage of those a lot, lot quicker. Uh, Lastly, then, then you have things like inventory files. So you want to set up your hosts, your comms, if you've got any potential file issues. Uh, and then you'll want to go and look at the Galaxy collections. So when you're writing an Ansible playbook, uh, you'll notice I'm specifying a collection, uh, and then I want a module within that collection. And that's how it's then deciding uh, the parameters. Really good documentation on there. There's documentation on there, examples on the Galaxy. Uh, you know, go and have a look. Uh, it's absolutely invaluable as a, as a fast start. Uh, and then if you want to have a look at Lightspeed, Lightspeed again has a trial. So again, if you're looking at that community element, go and get started for free. Try it, see what, it, uh, see what it's like, see if it works for you. Uh, and then if you want to take it to the next level, uh, happily get us engaged and, and we can discuss how you might want to take it to that next level. Yeah, You may even find, uh, and we find this a lot of times, that uh, organizations already are using Ansible, uh, whether it be community Ansible or uh, AAP on other systems that are on I, and that's the real key thing here is it's that collaboration element so that we've got a single uh, source of automation. And again, we can reuse stuff we've got on the eye, we don't reinvent it, but uh, we've got a central repository uh, that is organization. So lastly, I um, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. If you want to find out more, um, we're happy to get, you know, we can help you get started. If you want, if you just want to kick the tires and try that community, but you're even still not sure what to get, you know, reach out to us if you want to look at, you know, uh, if you're already using it, but you want to adopt it on the eye, again, you'll find that you've got people with those skills in, but if you're not sure how you get started on the eye, let us know. Uh, but it may be that you want to go a little bit further and do a, a proper proof of concept or proof of value, whereby we can look at some, uh, your, some of your top use cases. Maybe we have a workshop, work out what your kind of top use cases are, and then show you uh, how that would look like. Again, we can do it whether it's community Ansible or we can look at uh, the more enterprise, depending on what your prompts are. Alternatively, you might just want to find out more information. So if you want to find out more information, just let us know, get in touch. Um, but there's lots and lots of content out there as well. But uh, also it's something that we are doing, uh, enabling our customers automation ready uh, to make sure that we can get you on that journey. Some references. So as Alex said, the recording being made available, um, but uh, really, really good resources. Again, lots of trials. So, uh, but even, uh, you know, I find with a trial, it's kind of a, sometimes a bit fire and forget. So even if you do want to do a trial, just uh, just let us know. Happy to get involved uh, to maximize the benefit that you have to make that informed decision on your next steps. So I'd like to thank you for your time. And uh, Alex, uh, see what questions we may have in the uh, chat. Hi, oh, James. That was a, a whistle stop tour, but thank you ever so much. A lot to take in, I think, um, certainly for for everybody here. Um, I would run a poll if I knew how to do that on Zoom and just find out how many folks are using uh, Ansible at the moment. If, I could, if, if you could use a chat, if you're using Ansible at the moment, you just want to put a, a yes in the chat. Um, and that would uh, give me an idea of, of how many folks are using it. But but in the meantime, whilst you're, you're doing that, the couple of questions did pop in to the chat, James, I think one of the questions you've already answered, which is, well, how can I, how do I get started? And can I talk to somebody about this at Meridian? And the answer clearly is yes, um, do get in touch. So email at Meridian is as simple as first name dot second name at meridianit.co.uk. So I'm sure either James or myself would be happy to um, just to, to help you start or get along on that journey. Uh, the other question that's popped in here, James, was it seems like a lot of effort um, having the AAP platform. Um, we've got a lot of investment in an existing scheduler tool. Is there a quick win that we can make? That's my summary of the question. Yeah. So so I think the thing is here is, as I said, this is where it, it's, um, it's, a it's a strategic journey. Um, and this is where AAP, as I said, it uh, seems like a bit of a heavy investment to start. And that's where do the community, do the community edition. Uh, that will get you started. That will give you a quick win. Um, you know, it's very easy to install. Uh, and then try to replicate some of those maybe uh, minor, uh, minor business use cases. But this is where, again, try and we use what you've already got. So it doesn't need to be that we are calling IBMI directly. 
let's integrate with your existing tool. So if you've already got some schedules, let's integrate with it. Uh, and it, you'll probably find that uh, we can probably integrate with your existing scheduler tool. It just means that it opens the door to uh, the IBMI not being seen as a, as a black box that sits in the corner, but it's a more strategic part of the conversation. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to ask you a question as well. It's not on the list, but it's something that I've come across in, in my career where I've got a couple of steps that run on an IBMI side tool, scheduling tool, whether that's the help systems tooling or the, the advanced job scheduler that's just on the IBMI or even, even a, just a CL script that's running. And then there needs to be some sort of integration with a, a Windows server where you, you need that Windows server job to complete before handing back the process flow back into IBMI. Is that something that Ansible is able to, to do? Yeah, so this is where Ansible would say, I can run the IBMI part, then I can run the Windows part. And this is where the output of a task can be registered to a result. So you can use that result. So for example, case in point is, is uh, am I 7.5 ready? So we could check, for example, uh, do you have certain functions on the eye? Uh, do you have certain uh, installed options? Yeah, we've got them all. We're good there. Right. Are we good on the Windows side? So let's check the Windows side. But as part of that, you can register the results set and feed that into the next part of the playbook. So it might be, yes, you want to look at your Windows systems. I want to loop through all my Windows systems, do some checking, and then go back to the eye. But yes, you can feed information. And that's the beauty of the cross-platform. Cool. OK, that's great. And one final question that's popped in, and that uh, inevitable question, really, how, you know, from zero, from not having any uh, any of this software installed at all and, and then needing to begin to explore, uh, I guess, the resources available online, how, how long until you can go from kind of zero to having something that you can have productively in place? Yeah, so I mean that's a great question, Alex. And I would I would say you know uh, normally what's going to catch people out here is going to be those open source packages. The first two are fairly standard. Um, I would say in terms of getting it up um, and some basic comms is probably close to a day, maybe a day or two, just to get the basic uh, comms working. And then as I said, for me, um, you know uh, why why reinvent the world? Right? There's lots of uh, examples in there. So go and go and take an example that uh, that's non disruptive from uh, from the galaxy uh, copy and paste it execute it and you've got something running again because once you start running them then it's then ah uh, yeah that's really really useful but what i'd like to do is do this specific so, so it's it's fairly close to what's already out there it may need a minor tweak uh, and i would say you know within within the space of a week you'd probably have something up that you could safely say was uh, was working really really well right within a week that's pretty impressive yeah. Okay. And is there a cost associated with the Ansible environment? So uh, in terms of uh, community Ansible, no, there isn't. Uh, there is when you start getting into to AAP. Uh, and again, it depends on what your infrastructure looks like, whether you install AAP natively on things, something like RHEL, or you decide that you want to install it on OpenShift. And again, that that's a different conversation. But in terms of the the uh, in terms of uh, AAP. Uh, from a licensing perspective, generally, it then becomes um, uh, on the, the targets of the number of hosts that you generally have. Um, but uh, as you're aware, Alex, this is something we're doing with our customers here already is that we, we're making them Ansible aware for like automation ready so that um, the customers uh, will be able to take advantage of those as well. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't see any other questions coming through. Um, so I, I'll just give a, a, a brief moment for, for people to frantically type anything in if, uh, if they've thought of something in the last 30 seconds, but, um, it's been a really valuable dip into Ansible. Thank you, James. It's been a, you know, a whistle stop education, but really for, for anyone that's really interested in, in taking this a little bit further and understanding what we, what we can do with the product and the tool set. Uh, please do get in touch. Uh, we'd love to to talk with you more. Uh, but in the meantime, I think I'll I'll just check get nothing else in on the chat. So I'll, I'll draw us to a close. Thank you for joining us this morning. I really appreciated your time. I hope you found it a valuable session. 
Um, and I shall let you get back to your day jobs and uh, give you a little bit of time back. So thanks again. And uh, yeah, enjoy exploring the world of automation. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye, everybody.